What we're going to talk about today, well, um, all flash arrays, is it an actual market segment or do we think it's vendor hype? And bearing in mind we have vendors in the room, I have to be quite, quite careful and we'll come to that in a second. So, um, so who am I? Um, well, as you know, my name's Chris Evans. Uh, I'm not the one who's the, um, the famous actor or anything like that. Um, but I have been in... And you're not that Howard Marks either, yeah, which, um, which probably means a lot for the, uh, for the British people here, not so much, I, I guess, the, uh, the people from the Netherlands. Um, been in IT for 28 years, working, and actually started on, on those types of devices. And so computing looks somewhat different today. I doubt whether there are many people in the room who even know what they are, apart from Howard and maybe Mark, of course. Uh, no offence, no offence, gentlemen, but, you know, the grey beard side of the room. Um, no, that's, well, the bottom two are British, actually, so, um, but they were better than the ones in the US. So. No, I don't, no, I don't recognize them. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a photo of the top, Me too, me too. Another, that's another story, though. So I'm, I'm an IT consultant, uh, analyst, blogger, uh, like Martin, a bit of a know-it-all, I think. Um, tend to focus on storage, cloud, and virtualization. Um, I work for a consultancy company that I own called Langton Blue, and you can find me on social media at Chris um, Evans. Now... Just one little thing before you go any further. Um, I will put a disclaimer up to say that I do actually um, do work with a few vendors in this space, uh, and that's paid work, uh, as well as advice work. Uh, that includes HDS, Caminario, who you've already seen today, and HP. And I'll leave it at that. So what are we going to talk about today? What are we going to go through? Well, um, the question is really, you know, is there an all-flash market, a genuine all-flash market? Is there a good reason to separate the technology into something unique and call it a separate segment? Is that differentiation, if there is one, justified in any way? Um, are you just being carried along with vendor analyst hype? Which, you know, is a debatable question. And to be honest, at the, at the end of the day, should you care? Should you really care? So let's have a look back at, um, at where things were. And again, I'm going to divert to probably the gentleman on this side of the room, who probably know, uh, probably, you probably remember reading this, these stories, uh, Howard. So, I was just looking to see if I wrote it. Uh, I don't think you wrote either of those two. Um, but the one, <laughs> so the one on the, one on the left is, um, talks about the 2305, which was an IBM replacement um, disk drive from Storage Tech, and uh, was a solid state disk. Solid state array almost, I suppose. Um, on this side here, we've got uh, TMS, uh, and that was from 2003. So this stuff's been around for quite a while, but not necessarily in the form that we see it today. If you bought one of those boxes in 1978, you'd pay $150,000 for 11.2 megabytes of data, which is slightly expensive. And even then, was only 1.4 millisecond latency. It wasn't that great. Um, the 2003 system that you saw just there, $219,000 for 32 gigs. So things start to get a bit better. But actually, if you look back on that screen there, you can just see it down on the bottom. Oop, just do that again. You can just see it on the bottom here, $1.85 per megabyte. And we now are paying, what, $1 to $2 a gigabyte. So it's 1,000 times cheaper than it was 12 years ago, 13 years ago. Unbelievable price. The interesting thing at the bottom here, I found this quote, and anybody who knows HDS would know this chap called Pete Gurr, who used to work for ESG, you, know, you guys know Pete. And basically he sat there and said, you know, Flash is just, doesn't have the economic fundamentals, we're not going to see it widely adopted. Well, now we have got the fundamentals, and we are going to start seeing it being widely adopted. Big Sorry? Big it, right? Yeah, well, exactly. So, um, so that was Flash as it was, and now we talk about Flash um, today, and this is what a lot of people think Flash has been uh, in terms of the industry. They think that EMC were the first company to put stuff into a, into a box in 2009, just putting SLC drives into an array. And in the sort of the modern version of things, I suppose, to a certain degree that's true. But to actual fact, you also have Violin who were doing stuff with Direct Attach using DRAM, and you had TMS as well, and a number of other companies. Um, I like to sort of divide the modern stuff into three segments which I would class as flash optimized, enhanced, and all flash. And those come under a set of definitions that look something like this. So flash optimized, I would say, was a traditional box that somebody shoved some SSDs into. And they may have done some optimization work to make that, that work. Flash enhanced might be one way you've used flash to do um, 
to improve the performance, like working a log structured file or something like that into the architecture. And then, of course, you've got all the old flash stuff, like Kaminaria we're seeing today, Extreme IO, and so on, where the architecture has been built specifically to suit NAND flash. Um, and that's either using dedicated hardware, like the VIMs you see from um, Violin, or commodity SSDs. But basically, that's what we're seeing in terms of flash. So why do we think there's a distinction with flash? Well, first of all, the marketing people have to have something to sell. So they have to have a good reason to knock at your door. And actually, it was really funny when you were saying, Martin, about the way that vendors turn up and they go, look at what I've got to sell. Here's something shiny, here's something new. Would you like to buy it? They need to have a story why they can knock on your door. So of course, they like to differentiate with a new product type, especially if it's a tra traditional existing vendor. Um, everybody loves the latest shiny thing. We all love those, we all love our phones, we all, we, all, we all love something new to play with. And vendors like to sell something shiny because they know people like to buy it. Um, and more importantly, when it comes down to it, of course, you can charge more for something that can be classed as a premium product. You certainly can charge more. Um, and this makes it a perfect, market for sorry, a perfect market for startup companies. And not surprisingly, we've seen lots of companies coming out selling flash, flash systems. So, you know, a lot of it, I would say, as a, is, a, is a good marketing story. Then we get on to what the analysts think. Um, and I hope there's nobody from any of the analysts in the room, but if they are, they're going to get upset, I suppose. Uh, but that's fine. That doesn't matter. Um, so and we, if we look at, say, how the, um, the analysts measure the, the industry, and we look at, say, Gartner, they all measure um, things using their magic quadrant. And I didn't get permission to reproduce this, so, so we'll just have to hope that they're not, they're not watching. Um, and they track two things, ability to execute and completeness of vision. It's not a measure of how many sales they've made, although that sa the sales are tracked, and I'll come on and talk about that in a moment. But it is a measure of how well they can execute and deliver the products. So not surprisingly, there are vendors who are making a lot of noise in the industry at the top here. Um, we won't, I have no idea whether they're um, big Gartner customers or not. I suspect that they probably are. Um, and that's why they're uh, part of the reason why they're at the top here. Um, but, you know, there's, there's a spread of companies all the way around. Um, and in order to get onto this magic quadrant, you have to satisfy a certain number of criteria. And this is where things start getting a bit messy. Who's the one that is even worse than Nimbus? <laughs> that one there. Yeah, Cisco. That's a oh, Cis yeah, yeah, we know that. Cisco, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's even worse than Nimbus. <laughs> well, we're both out of business. So yeah. Bear in mind, mind that's June. It's yes. interesting to see that. that oh, you know, yeah. you might as well have just painted over that yeah. one now. Yeah. Yeah. It's not worth talking about. So to get on, no, I, I have no idea. I don't know what. I don't know where they are. I've tweeted Tom and haven't got the Right. Okay. Um, so to get onto the um, to get onto this um, chart, you need to have a dedicated SKU. You need to be selling a, a specific, separate flash product. It can't be configurable with hard disk drives. So you can't put disks into the system. And why do they do that? because it makes it easier for them to track sales of that particular product. Could you explain the, what access uh, means? Right, yes, okay, so, oops, sorry. So, completeness of vision. So basically, how good are the, com are the company at evolving their story, their strategy, um, their direction with the product, putting in new features, etc. And obviously the ones that are in this side here are seen as the visionaries, and then on the, the left they're seen as the niche players. On the y-axis, um, you're looking at ability to execute. So how good are they at bringing the product out, keeping that, that roadmap up, you know, refreshing the product regularly, et cetera, et cetera, all those sort of things. And there are some proper definitions about what each of those two categories mean and how Gartner rate them. But effectively, you're looking at saying that the companies up here have probably got the best vision of what the technology should be going forward, and they're bringing it to the market and delivering it the best. But ability to execute includes things like, do you have support in sub-Saharan Africa? Because yes, that's right. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, so there's a lot more to it than that, than just simply, um, you know, can you develop the technology? So this is where, this, these are the actual Gartner definitions. I took those out of a, a, a presentation this afternoon, actually, because I thought it was interesting to look at them. So, can only be a self-contained system, can only have SSDs, can't be expanded, must be sold as a standalone product. So as we said, Gartner want to make sure they can track this and that they can say this is what the market consists of. And obviously, if you imagine, um, 
in a, in a hybrid array, that becomes very difficult. How do, you know, how do you know how much flash was put into a hybrid array? And the problem is that a lot of this data that Gartner have doesn't come from any actual sales data. Um, uh, we've, we've obviously seen now from the pure storage IPO that potentially the numbers that Gartner quoted were $100 million overstated. And Gartner have taken the hit and said that was their fault. And they've taken the hit and said, yeah, we got, we got the numbers wrong. But, you know, yeah, but pure... stood up with those numbers on a big slide behind it. Yes. So nobody ever complained at the time when it, when it was being said. Could you switch back for a second? Mm -hmm. Oops. No. If I knew how to use your pointer, I probably could. Yes, but because this is the objectionable part, where it says, not if the customer really begs will a vendor allow them to add hard disks. Mm -hmm. So HP has two models, the 7400 and the 7450. Yep. The only difference is if you buy a 7400, and then two years later you decide you want to add hard disks to it, Gartner has forced HP to say no. Yeah. 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 HP my folks would break the rules at that point. My of folks at my folks at HP tell me that to put an SKU on the HP price list costs HP a million dollars. Okay. So Joe Unsworth, the analyst that wrote this piece of shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you get, you get, I think you probably tell from the, the, the discussion about where we're going that <laughs> the Gartner side of things. This customer hostile statement. This <laughs> says that the vendor is required to fuck the customer over. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm, I, I, didn't say that in, I didn't say that in my presentation. <laughs> but you, 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 backed me, you backed me up there. Thank you very much for that, Howard. I appreciate that. But yes, yeah, so, you know, ultimately, this is just. I could be stronger. <laughs> this, this, this is done for. Um, <laughs> This is done for, um, for Gartner's benefit, effectively. So then, so then you have to ask the question at the bottom here. What about the vendors who are selling all flash systems, who are genuinely selling all flash systems? They could be out selling um, other people in the, in the, on that chart quite happily. We just don't know. You know. They'll come out with their own numbers and tell us what they are, but we just don't know. And the question you've got to think is, are you being mis misled about how yes. successful flash companies are <laughs> When, then, thank you, Howard. When, when you look at these figures and when you look at the Gartner information. <laughs> that is true. That is true. That's a very good point. Um, so, I, I, how long have I got, Enrico? Uh, he doesn't remember. I'll just keep on going. I just want to. I just want to, 11 minutes. I'll just make sure I don't go. Um, too far over, because the last time I did this presentation, I believe I was actually 25 minutes over time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to do that again. So, so why would we be bothering to use Flash in the first place? You know, what, is the, what is the point of using these all Flash arrays in the first place? Well, um, it fixes some of the problems we can't solve with a hard disk array. So things like consistent low latency, the IO blender, we'll come back to that, IO density, and efficient implementation of deduplication. I'm not going to get into a discussion about why, we can have that discussion with Howard later on outside, because <laughs> I'm sure Howard will have an opinion. But let's just assume that it, it does help that situation. And of course, de depending on how you calculate it, it potentially could give you a lower TCO, not necessarily the cost of buying the device. <clears throat> so what, what, is, what is the I.O. Blender? And if you've not seen this show with a guy, this is a guy on YouTube, and he does a series of things called Will It Blend? Um, he, he basically, he, he makes the blend tech blenders you see in places like Starbucks and so on. And anytime anything comes out, he puts it in his blender and shows how it, be, it blends up. It's, it is bizarre what he manages to get to blend in that machine. Really I incredible. I particularly recommend the Bic Lighter episode where the butane explodes. Right, I haven't seen that one. I've seen the one where the iPhone catches fire, I think, on one of them, which, because of the battery, that was pretty amazing. But it's worth having a look. Anyway, so the IO blender, uh, quickly stated, um, our workloads today very much blend up the I.O. and produce more random I.O. than we ever used to have. And hard drives aren't very good at that. They're much better at sequential I.O., but Flash is very good at random I.O., so Flash works really well with this. What else are we solving? And this is not my picture. I stole it from somebody. <laughs> but it, just, it describes the situation perfectly. So low latency, the time it takes to get my I.O. To, come, to, to, be, to be issued and come back. I, I actually think... 
I actually think this is a made-up picture. I don't think it's an actual real picture, but it just, it, it's, in one picture it describes what low latency means. Um, and of course low latency means you get more IOs done, and more, work, more IOs done, more work, you make more money. What about IO, den IO density? And this one's for Luca, because he keeps, he, I think he's got a, a, a bee in his bonnet by IO uh, latency. And really what we're saying here is, how many IOPS do I get for every gigabyte of storage? And with hard drives, Chris said it earlier in his presentation, the IOPS density is going down and down and down with traditional drives. Shingle drives are even worse because of the need to rewrite the whole block of um, space every time you update. So ultimately, drives are getting worse at that IO density, but our applications are demanding more IO density. So we actually need to go to Flash in order to solve this problem. Um, Basically, SSDs have got an order of magnitude better in that scenario. Um, TCO, well, TCO, we could, you know, we could debate t different aspects of TCO all day, and I think you know, everybody's got their opinion, and every, everybody's environment is sensitive to different things, but we know that we could potentially have lower power cooling and space cost costs. Um, we know that NAND uh, prices are coming down dramatically. Chris has already said that you know, the cost is coming down. We're seeing newer types of technology being put into these arrays. So costs are coming down. Deduplication compression improve, improves the, the efficiency of that in terms of physical space that you store on the actual media and therefore the cost. And of course, we can potentially put these devices in for longer because we're not, we haven't got the same um, power issues with them. So potentially, with all of the flexible terms vendors are coming up with... And less maintenance. And less maintenance, yeah, exactly. Um, we potentially could see longer lease times and therefore an overall TCO could be more attractive to certain people. There you go, Howard, you're on the slide. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get into the presentation somehow and I thought I might as well just put you on there, it would be easy, wouldn't it's it? It's one of my favorite photos. Um, so this is, um, this is a picture from, um, where did we go, SanDisk? SanDisk. SanDisk. It's the, um, actually, you're in the background, I think, Aaron, aren't you? And uh, Aaron took the picture. Uh, no, I, no, I took the picture because uh, you can actually see me you can see me there taking the picture, yeah. you and you can. Keep holding that thing up so everybody. Can everybody took oh, a picture, okay. yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Enrico in the background. So basically, this is what the wafer looks like that you cut the flash, the NAND flash from. Um, here's here's the question: you know, does does it have to be all flash? Could we do other things that could do this? Well, you know, it doesn't have to be an all flash array. Potentially, it depends on your workload. We could use a hybrid array that might solve some of your solutions if you're not after really ultra low latency. Or we could put it into the, put flash into the server, and we could just use. I think Chris was, um, or the, the chap over there was referring to NV DIMMs. I think, in terms of the technology that Chris hadn't mentioned, but obviously we're putting flash into the server in certain various different ways, NVMe, uh, NV DIMM, and so on. So you know, you could just put flash straight into the server, and that's one solution too. So it doesn't have to be an all flash array. Um, does it have to be a dedicated all flash box? So the, the, people, the folks from Caminario probably would say yes, um, as would the other vendors. But you know there are solutions out there that come from other vendors where they've taken their existing technology, put Flash into it, and made it work. And in your env environment, that might be more useful because you may have developed processes around a box, and all you want is Flash in there to make it work faster, but you still want to keep all of your processes and everything you've built around it. You know, and that, that might be important for you. So that's worth con uh, considering. So, so as, a, as a consultant, I would say the first thing to do would be engage me. I'll come in and charge you a fortune to have that discussion in the first place. Um, in the short form, it depends. It depends. Yeah. I mean, th that is the problem, ultimately. I think what, I'm what we're trying to get to, and you'll see as we're getting to this, you know, the final slide, ultimately what we're saying is all flash could be great for you in, a cer in certain circumstances. You need to look at what your requirements are. You know, is it low latency? Is it performance? What is it you're trying to fix? Don't buy it because it's the, uh, an all flash box. Look at it and say, what do you need to do? So, you know, resist the shiny thing desire and don't just put it in because it's shiny. Look at your requirements. Is it performance, latency, throughput you're trying to fix? You know, do you, do you need the resiliency, the cost, uh, the, sorry, the resiliency features? Some of the vendors already do that, some don't. Um, how, you know, how sensitive to, are you on cost? So you need to sit down, you need to build your own criteria. Don't take the analyst's figures and face value, go and do a bit of digging. And ultimately, 
you know, test these guys out that you, you know, that are in the room, Tintree, Kaminario, do a, do a proof of concept, evaluate them, test them, see what they look like. You know, if they think their products are good enough, you, you know, they'll come through in a, in a bake-off and you'll, you'll see the results. And I think that was my last slide.